Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism. This one is a response to some questions we've received um, that people have been sending in. Again, enough people ask the same question. I recognize it's on people's mind. So the question is, why do survivors of narcissistic abuse struggle with intimacy and intimacy issues in relationships for such a long time? So this question comes up. I, I've, I've worked on it clinically and all of that. Like just why? Why do we struggle with intimacy and relationships for such a long time afterwards? And it comes up over and over again, which is, so not everything that people are struggling with in, in, in narcissistic abuse is active abuse. It's sort of like, what is this legacy it's left me? Okay, so let's break this down. First, many, if not most survivors of narcissistic abuse have had a lifelong history. For example, a parent with a narcissistic or antagonistic personality style. I know that's not all people, but it's a lot of people. So for a lot of you, these tracks got laid down a long time ago. This pattern, even if you didn't have it in childhood, it could come up for people who had particularly like long-term or highly abusive narcissistic relationships in adulthood, even if they didn't have a narcissistic parent. It's less frequent, but certainly it's an issue. Now, narcissistic abuse in childhood means crappy boundaries everything, including love and warmth and empathy, all of it happens on the parent's schedule, not when you need it. It's not emotionally responsive. In a narcissistic family system, it's the narcissistic parent system. The rest of us just live in it, right? There's no recognition of us as separate human beings, separate, separate living beings, right? But as rather we're things, that satisfy the narcissistic parents' wants and needs, or were annoyances that frustrate and bother them. If you grew up in one of these families, you learn that your needs will not be met, and you actually learn to keep yourself out of sight and almost as small as possible, so you are as unbothersome as possible, so you don't frustrate them and have to deal with their rage. So then add to that, Narcissistic parents, they want what they want when they want it, right? So when they want or need your supply, they're going to expect it. So if they need you to look good or look the way they want or do what they want, their eye of Sauron attention will move to you and they will become intrusive and overly concerned about your life, your friends, your activities, your soccer practice, what you're eating, your weight, what you are wearing. It is deeply intrusive and it's a constant boundary violation, which I'm sure many of you identify with. For example, I am struck by how often I hear people from narcissistic families tell me it was literally open season on them. And narcissistic parent, perhaps both parents, would comment on something as personal as their bodies, their weight, what they eat, what they wear. I mean, sort of literally and bizarrely objectifying their own child who was really viewed as nothing more than an extension of them, right? And then these parents would have no problem making these comments right into adulthood. It was not unusual for this to result in lifelong issues around body image and self-appraisal, right? That voice gets internalized. Now, in a narcissistic family, your needs are also shamed. The narcissist always controls the emotional thermostat and they serve as the only window into reality. It's their reality or no reality. So if you assert yourself in a way that's actually separate to them, I have a need, I have an interest, I don't agree with that, or I don't agree with what you're saying, and what you're doing is not in line with them, well, there is going to be hell to pay, mostly through shame. Because basically, it translates into, how dare you exist outside of me? How dare you have a need outside of me? And so any expression of your need was so often paired with shame that you learn to basically silence and abnegate your own needs, basically deny your own needs. And so you aren't going to be good at speaking your needs or even identifying your needs when you get into adulthood. So if this is how you grew up, your template of relationships was of constant boundary violations, coldness, alternating with intrusiveness, shame, having no identity outside of a relationship, having no personhood or rights to your feelings, right? It's not exactly a great setup for an adult relationship, is it? 
Many of us learned the fine art of hoop jumping and shape shifting in childhood, learning to be exactly what the narcissist parent needed us to be, to avoid their rage, to get scraps of recognition and to survive. So that means first that from a trauma bonded perspective, we end up sort of being attracted, sadly, to the hot, cold, up, down, I love you, I hate you roller coaster that is a manipulative partner. Second, we learn that relationships are either places we're going to need to exhaust ourselves trying to please and placate a partner, or they're places of terror where we are afraid of the intrusive control, so we're going to avoid them. So exactly how does intimacy blossom under those circumstances? It ain't easy. Either a person finds themselves as an adult, either giving into the sexual demands or wants of a partner to please them or win them over, or a person is just scared of getting close to anyone because they're wired to believe that shame is going to come up just around the corner. So that's the why. But what's the what? Therapy is essential when this is the issue. Every story is different. So doing the exploration on what this sort of narcissistic past history has done to your sense of you in a relationship and how to be in a relationship requires a deep dive that is led by someone who's trained to have this kind of conversation with you. The hardest part of the work is the pain of recognizing that this is what you had experienced and slowly peeling those layers away so you can start recognizing that your life doesn't have to be a running away from intimacy or a running into false intimacy. But sometimes understanding where it comes from can help break you from the cycle of I am bad at relationships or I am not made for relationships or closeness and see it as I was taught love or closeness is scary and out of control and harmful or this isn't me but it does require me doing the work to extricate myself from this idea of pawning off my reality and sense of self just to be in a relationship. All of us can do this, but it's a process. And these damned histories of narcissistic abuse are like a smell we cannot get out of our clothes. But you can keep washing the clothes and maybe there'll always be a slight lingering scent. But over time, it's something you notice less and less. Again, it's a process. It's not as though one day you wake up and say, bam, yeah, mm, I see myself totally separate from these, this original narcissistic relationship. I wish it worked that way. It doesn't. It's a process of seeing it, of understanding it, of recognizing it, accepting it, grieving it, getting more clarity, giving permission to become ourselves, accept ourselves, and recognizing it again is a process. The goal becomes seeing yourself clearly as someone deserving of healthy love for yourself and not to live yourself and not to live your life as a source of supply. Thanks again.